Hello everybody, this is From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemo, this is Christopher Graves, and this is Matt White. Yeah! Hey, hey you got Yay. it! Yay! Four shows in a row. <laughs> Matt, you're going to suck tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Friday, one of the two. Uh, I hope I don't suck on Friday, because uh, we can't take any more of that. No, we can't. Alright, so our wonderful show... Is brought to you by the wonderful folks at <laughs> Hockey Walker! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 2002 West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can also call them at 414-800-7585. Or visit their website at HockeyWalkerMilwaukee.com. You can go there at their store at 2002 West Howard Avenue at Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and get... What can you get there, guys? Uh, you can get a lot of things there, Dan. You can get your hockey equipment. You can get your inline skates. You can get your uh, officiating equipment. You can get uh, hockey jerseys like the one that I'm wearing. You can get or some NHL, NHL jerseys. Yeah. You can get hoodies, uh, NHL hoodies. Get they sell that, CCM gear. Get that awesome Hartford Whalers jersey that we everybody everybody needs in their collection. Yeah. Uh, get your skates there, sharpened there um, uh, at any time of the day, really. Or you can drop your skates off there any time of the day. You got a nice little drop-off area where uh, all you need is just to provide your uh, Whoops. your name and information. Uh-oh. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Someone's jumping the gun. But, Whoops, uh, I cut the promo. Keep going, keep going. You can uh, drop your skates off at any time as long as you leave your contact information, name and phone number, and they'll call you up once your, uh, your skate blades are nice and sharp. We can pick uh, them up. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, uh, you could also, uh, yeah, you can get jersey customization. Mm -hmm. You can go all. say hi to the, the uh, their wonderful, uh, one of the main employees there. You can say hi to the great guy who sponsors us, Milos. 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 Awesome dude. Yep. A former hockey player in his own right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good location too, right next to Wilson Park. Uh, yeah, and Boston and Street. and they just sponsored the the what was that the Conkle uh, Pond Hockey. Yep, tournament over there at in Greenfield. Yeah, at Conkle Park. Really watch it, we'll have to get a we'll have to get a jump on that if he does it next year. Yep, we're gonna have to get on that. So as um, I don't you guys saw, it I just want to watch. No, 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 no. I, just I mean, watch it. it'll not make good, it'll make good videos if we try play. Yeah. <laughs> it would be the emphasis on the word try. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would you know, be us falling. Yeah. With hockey sticks in our hands. Yeah. All right, Dan. Do we? Let's. Should we get into it? I guess. Do we I really mean, need we to? We kind of have to. Don't yeah, we? we do. Thanks. Even, even the categories. <laughs> All right, so stats were pretty even across the board. Both teams were uh, 30 plus in the shots. Both teams were over on the power play. Yeah. Um, only difference in the score, I'll get into that momentarily. Penalties, pretty even. Uh, three, four to two. Some of them were eh. Mm -hmm. The refereeing was uh, definitely questionable in this game. Not definitely. enough. Not enough. Like, yeah, um, well, I saw it. They didn't call much. They let no. a lot of stuff slide tonight. On the other side. Yeah. Yeah. On again, our side, if we did one thing that remotely looked like a penalty, it was. Yep. The arm would go up and, yep, raise your hand if you're an idiot. I think it was bogus that one goal that they waved off in the first. I can see why. It's just, it seemed really too quick for them to denounce right away. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't even take a look at it. No. Which, I'm sorry, any scoring play of any kind, even if you wave a goal, uh, should I think be, it should be reviewable, just like reviewable. in the NFL, every yes. scoring play. Well, then again, aren't we the AHL? Aren't we the playing grounds for trying new stuff? Yeah. We should at least implicate a challenge system. That doesn't mean we need in-goal cameras. No. But a challenge system to where you could go, hey, I just need you to take a look at the goal. Scoring play is only challenge for now. Well, then you don't. In goal to... cameras would actually help, though. I mean, they would. It's just a like. Because then point, you need blue line cameras yeah, and basically it's... you need the whole kit to do all this stuff. But it. And they are kind of expensive because people, uh, if a puck hits it, you got to buy a whole. Well, that's the one. thing, Dan. If the AHL is hard for cash, is like if that's what. This is all about. You can find sponsorship that'll sponsor a goal camera. Yeah, yeah, you can. 
if the NHL can if move to Asia. Not sponsored in any way, but it, Wisconsin Vision would be all over that for us. Let's be real. David Gruber, he owns this town. <laughs> but, he um, does. Yeah. He's but, um, let's get back into yeah, let's it. Get let's get into the scoring. Uh, I missed this goal because I had a phone call. Well, you were supposed to stay out for the rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that didn't work for me because I'm not going to pay to just walk around the arena the entire night. Oh, By can't. the time I got home from the show, I'd be like, okay, you guys are doing this on your own. Well, <laughs> we did have a good, like, a was it a nice bonus of the first, which I, I think Cole Schneider deserves a, a stick tap for because, hey, it's nice to get a shorty. It's nice to get a shorty. Yeah, yeah. And Frederick Goudreau got you. Yep, uh, both of them, uh, 15th goal for Cole Schneider. Uh, 15th and, assist for Goudreau. And that was in the first. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Freddie Goudreau. Um, and then Rem Pitlick in the second scored with an assist from Ellie Tolpin in his 12th and Frederick Allard his 17th. Who knew? I didn't even know Allard had that many assists. Mm -hmm. I did. Let's he, talk. He's, he's quietly racking up assists this year. Can we talk about this next? Uh, was it the first Iowa Wild goal a little bit? Because I think that needs to be explained as to how it happened. Um, you mean a high stick? There was a high, well, there was a high stick, but also one of our uh, was it one of the admirals' uh, skaters tripped, and basically it threw Grossnick off, which again. Yeah, he toe picked into the ice. <laughs> yeah, that it was. was bad yeah and um uh, it was kyle rao with his 12th was an assist from mason shaw i think when he was celebrating after i'm like dude you, you really don't need to celebrate much you got in because you know our goalie was watching his guy basically nosedive into the ice <laughs> all right and then we have uh, dimitri sokoloff uh his 13th was an assist from brendan to whom uh, his 13th, and Brendan Manel, his, thir his 34th. 34th. Yeah, he Manel was one of the guys uh, we uh, warned everybody about. And then we, in the third, th this was the high stick. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, Nic Nico Sturm scored his 12th with an assist from Matt Barkowski, his 14th. And Sam Anas, his thir 43rd. Jeez. So, that said, what are our final thoughts before we get into the... Three stars of the game were Michael McCarron game. with sure. no goals, no assists. Uh, third star, uh, Capo Kakadu with 29 saves on 31 shots. And then Nico Stern with the game winner. Wait, how is McCarron our third star? I um, don't know. Face off, he probably. He didn't score anything. Face off, I'm guessing. Yeah. I guess. He had five win. shots. Yeah. Okay, and Goudreau had his So did Davies, apparently. I don't believe that, but okay. <laughs> did you not see a lot of those shots that were Oh, I saw the shots. I'm just like, I didn't really record any of them because they went almost to nowhere. Yeah, nowhere is the key word. But, um, no, McCarron was pretty solid in the face-off circle. If we could actually get the puck dropped. Yeah, why was the referee being extremely picky about dropping I puck. was furious because at the end of the second it was like we had a 20 we had 20 seconds the Admirals were on a power play because they were like 120 130 140 or something like that in their power play before the buzzer sounded and we're off into second intermission yeah. this this official is taking forever to just talk it out and I'm like dude we've got 20 seconds just to go. kick him out of the face off and drop the puck why are we having a conference now yeah. um so you're <sighs> my uh my crap list. Yes. Yay. Let's get into it. Steven Santini. That's it. Reason? Negative two. Tommy Novak. Tommy Novak. Negative two. And Tommy's like And it's, Daniel Carr, negative two. Everybody else is zero. It's strange to see Tommy Novak on it because Tommy is the guy that you get the assist from. Yeah. And he looked absolutely with lost. Lo yeah, he looked like he was on an island tonight. Didn't know what to do. Honestly, I think tonight was just a playoff game and the Admirals weren't ready for it when they should have been preparing for it. But, Dan, let's get into this. Let's talk about Daniel Carr. What's going on? I think that when he got called up to Nashville, it killed his momentum. Yeah. I, I, I think that's my honest opinion. Some guys just get that taste and they want it back so bad that they think, 
Well, what I did before is going to get me back up there. And apparently it's not. Now, someone asked me, because this was at the game, that is the line that Daniel Carr, like someone said it was Daniel Carr, uh, Yakov Trenin, and someone else that were... Tommy Novak. Tommy Novak were on the same line. Yeah. Did that line get changed? Yes. So maybe it's time to put that line back? <laughs> the other thing is, is you kind of need to put... Freddie Gaudreau was on that line at one point, too, yeah, and that true. worked really well in Rockford. And then the next game, you take him off that line, and we get blown so, out. Yeah, they started shuffling lines when so it was broken. I don't know line. why we were, we would be changing that, because I understand with the, the Yakov Trenin one, because, yes, you do have to change the lineup because he's gone up to Nashville, exactly. and you just can't wait on that. So in that case, I'm just like, okay, put Frederick Gaudreau in that line and see if that works. And they, I, I, to my recollection, they didn't even do that. Well, I think I said, playoff game tonight. They got punched in the mouth. They better come out swinging against Chicago on Friday. That's yeah. my thoughts on tonight's game. Do we have any more final thoughts on this game? Um, Troy Grossick stopped 33 of 36. He did the best he could with what he had in front of him. I, I have no thing. issue with Grossick's performance. All right, tonight. so let's get into the final it. stuff so we can get on to our preview. Yeah. yeah. All right, so sense. we have uh, UW Panther Arena was the home tonight for this game. Uh, the 2,711 were the attendants. It'll be much lower next Wednesday. <laughs> because um, I think we need to start promoting for them to sell tickets again. When we do well, that, they tend to have good crowds. Well, because tonight there was a lot of Iowa, uh, a lot of, uh, Iowa attendance tonight, too. Yeah, I saw a lot of Iowa Well, Stars between them and the Minnesota either. Wild fans. Hey, did you see I can hear them chirping, the too. Jersey tonight? What's that? Did you see the guy with the Iowa Stars jersey yeah. tonight? That was pretty cool. A nice little throwback. Yeah. All right, so then we have uh, the referees were Furman South and Adam Boleski. Boleski watched our guy get hooked, tripped, and then cross-checked on a breakaway yeah. and no call. Tyler Gregory, I'm familiar with him. And William Hancock is a linesman. Well, that's a pretty even thing. Speaking of even, now Minnesota has a winning record against us again. Doesn't that sound familiar? Or two, yeah, two, two. So at least they're not completely dominating us like they did last year. No, but it, this one kind of hurt a little bit more because, this, like, if this was in fact the playoff game itself, it should have been called like one. Yeah. Because these linesmen and these officials knew the caliber of this game. Yeah. And they did not call anything. They uh, dropped the puck, so to speak. As the one chicken near our section said, "Hey, ref, pick up the." Uh, well, Pick up it? your phone. You've got a couple missed calls. Right yeah. There, or, or check your phone. Or uh, or as one dopey fan in our section said, uh, hey, ref, I think you missed your last period. Ah, mm. uh, I hope we don't get yelled at for that one. All right, anyways, uh, are we doing Okay, it's just a chirp. But we do have a game coming up Friday. It is yes. on my 24 and my 50. It will be Bill broadcasting uh, in my the... My 24 in the Milwaukee area and my 58 in the Chicago, Chicago area. Yep. And it's in my 50 area. in yep, Chicago, my 50. not my 58. But, all right, let's look at their record against the Wolves this year. They are 6-2, 1-1. One, one. Okay. Let's, let's make it 7, please. Um, As long as we can pull points from them, we'll be okay. Yeah. Now, why is it say the Wolves record is 4-4 four, four, or 2? Because they lost... That's their record. Oh, four games they lost. That's okay. their record, yeah. That's their record in the series against And them. then, yeah, okay, okay, I see that. Overall, in the last five years, the Admirals are 30, 25, and 3. So we still... <laughs> uh... What was the score of the last game against each other? When was it? Uh, that one was a... Was it a what was that, 5-2? Yeah, where we had the... the, the right? It was a repeat of tonight. Ah. Not, we as, had a, not as grandiose, though. Yeah. It wasn't an utter catastrophe, but we still there's, blew a two-goal yeah. lead. There's no... All right, uh, sh can I read off the top scorers? Go, Go right ahead. ahead. All right, for the Wolves, their top scorers, like usual, Lucas Elvinis, uh 11 goals, 32 assists. Like I said, rookie of the year right there. 
Then you got Curtis McKenzie, 14 goals, 20 assists. Then you got Gage Quinney, 14 goals, 18 assists. Uh, Brandon Peary, 11 goals, 19 assists. Then uh, Ty McGinn, 15 goals, 8 assists. Basically, their top five hasn't changed all year, damn near. No. Uh, no. El- like I said, Elvin is, he's probably going to be rookie of the year. This kid's been great. I'll tip my cap to him. He's playing really solid this year. How week. many of these? The Admirals are 1-4 in, in their last five. Yeah. This but is. I'm just glad they're getting their losing out of their system now. Hopefully in March they uh, wake up a bit. That's what I'm hoping. Or at least April. Well, I'm hoping March, because, uh, you know, you got to kind of clinch it. Yeah. So, I March like is, April, you can just relax. And March, is, off March is total. March is no off. time off for us at all. No. We have, like, three days off in total in March. Well, that's the other thing you or said, is we've had a busy February, too. Like, this isn't this isn't just, like, you know, run-of-the-mill, like, month. Yeah, we don't have too many back. We don't have too many doubles uh, next month. But, um... I don't want, like, I'm tempted to push the panic button, but I'm not going I'm to. Alright. If um, they lose 10 in a row, I will. Yeah. Alright, so let's talk about their goaltending. Their starting goalie is Oscar Daz. He has uh, three shutouts, 18 wins, 8 losses, 2 overtime losses with a 2.44 goals against average and a .911 save percentage. His shootout percentage is .667. Then we got Garrett Sparks, who's got 23 games played, two shutouts. He is uh, 2.82 goals against average, uh, six wins, 14 losses, and three overtime losses, with a .904 save percentage. Uh, they have ten. Em- they have allowed 10 empty net goals. Uh, what's Chicago's record over their last five? Uh, three and two. Do you think they're going to start Dansk against us? Most likely, because yeah. that's probably who they're going to start tomorrow against uh, Grand Rapids. So they play Grand Rapids tomorrow at 11 a.m. Ah. ah, so we get them on night two of a back-to-back. All right. Hopefully that spells good for us, because we have the day off tomorrow. And Rockford plays San Antonio. Iowa plays Texas. Yep. Yeah. So on Friday. A loss, was it a, a Texas win? I can't would be believe nice. I'm saying this, but come on, Texas. Well, Texas routed us, so they could easily route Iowa. So come on, Texas. <sighs> anyway. I just anyway, want to see Iowa lose. Uh, the league standings sit as followed with Bridgeport, or not Bridgeport, Binghamton winning tonight. Let's get into the standings so that the Admirals fans know that. I'm, I'm going to just do divisional because. We all know the league title means nothing. Nope. When it comes down to, oh yeah, well we won the league title. Well, guess what? We won the Calder Cup. Hey, you know that's one it. of those things. Well, I, no, I, but I I'm, I'm saying is, is if say we win the league title and that, and somebody else wins the Calder Cup, well we won the league title. Well we won the Calder Cup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have an you, army. I have a hook. <laughs> yeah. It's point. one of those right, arguments. Anyways, right, anyway. All right, so we're four points back. They're four points back behind us. Um, the one thing with this that I'm not worried about is when you sit back and look at it, beyond, okay, say we do fall to second place, okay? Where we sit right now, we have a 20-point lead on third. Yeah, because we only have a five-point lead on Iowa, so. I mean, it is a runaway between us. So we're in the playoffs practically no matter what we do. Yeah. Because there ain't no way that Rockford, or wait, there ain't no way Rockford, Chicago, or Grand Rapids go undefeated the rest of the year. Yeah, it could. No, no. I mean, even with us losing, I don't think that's happening. In the worst case scenario, I mean, we drop like six. The only thing we're going to do, and I think like, I can probably evidently speak for the rest of us, is that we're kind of silently rooting for San Antonio for our own personal cheerleading, but that's fine. Yeah. And given the situation amongst that division, our division, it's literally a rat run for the fourth and third and fourth place. Mm-hmm. So those teams are going to be literally be pounding each other as us and Iowa can oh, coast. Rockford. As I'm, us kind of, it, I'm agreeing with you. It would be fun to go to some road playoff games in Rockford. Same. So, uh, with that being said, there's that. Um, 
so that's our AHL video. Uh, let's get our, uh, what, when's our game to, uh, Friday? I believe uh, it's a 7 o'clock start. 7 o'clock, uh, gates open at 6 p.m. If you're going to that game, you definitely want to be there for the 6 o'clock gate open because there's only 3,500 of these bobbleheads that they're going to be giving away. Yeah, and they're games. probably going to start the pregame ceremony like a half hour after that. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, they're retiring Darren Hadar's number and raising it into the uh, rafters of the arena. Yep. Or so, dropping for whatever However matter. they do it. Either way, it's going to be up in the rafters. All and right. aren't they also wearing uh, retro jerseys as well? Yes, all weekend. Yeah. So, we're wearing, so I'm looking uh, forward to it this weekend. So, so speaking of jerseys, you can go buy a nice new Admiral jersey at our lovely friends at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Go there for your, all your hockey needs. They're, your, they're, they're Milwaukee's number one one-stop shop for all your hockey needs. I'm Daniel, this is Chris, and this is Matt. Wait, we will wait. see you guys later with a Florida Everblades video. Whoa, we haven't talked about Remember, like us on uh, YouTube. You know, yeah. subscribe on YouTube. We need subscribers. Remember, if you guys can get us up five, uh, uh, one, one. One. We need one subscriber. One. Just one subscriber from Milwaukee to Nashville on YouTube. Uh, there, I'm going to start putting a link in all of our videos so they can go find it. <laughs> so, yeah, on, on YouTube, I want to try to get at least five new subscribers. We're up to 29, guys. All righty. See ya. Yeah.